Uganda People's Defense Forces spokesperson Brigadier General Flavia Vyekwaso has mentioned two regrouping rebel groups planning to destabilize Uganda. However, Brigadier Wekwaso was quick to assure the country that UPDF is on the alert to protect and defend the citizens of Uganda from any external attack or aggression. UPDF has confirmed the threats from neighboring Diora Kong following a recent attack on UPDF camp in Zewi, Zombo district, where UPDF lost a soldier and others injured. This these bandits, so the so-called uh, rebels, operate from the other side, they cross from the other side coming into Uganda to mainly, mainly destabilize or cause insecurity in, within that area. The Homeland Liberation and Kodak forces from Kong are in the bad eye view on Uganda's army top list of enemies to pursue under the UN Security Council framework of hot pursuit, which requires no consultations for a country to invade an enemy using territorial grounds of a neighboring country to wreak havoc. But it was immediately foiled. Seven of the bandits were put out of action instantly. One gun was captured, and there are also other assorted weapons which were also captured, and these included bows, arrows, and machetes. The security of the area has been beefed up. Only the forces were there, but we've beefed up and we have made reinforcements to ensure that there are no further incursions. The army has also reinforced its disarmament operations in Karamoja region to combat cattle wrestling. This time round, we have even built more capacity. The force has built more capacity to ensure that these guns that are causing havoc are put in back. Investigations into the killing of a UPDF officer under Fisheries Protection Int at in the landing site in Kongo and Tebewakiso district are ongoing. It is alleged that the officer was drawn by illegal fishermen operating on the lake. But this even gives us more energy. It energizes us to even actually triple our efforts on these illegal fishermen. And we shall do it. This will not stop the soldiers or will not stop the security, no amount of intimidation. Because they do this just to make sure that perhaps we do not, or the soldiers avoid these waters. We shall not stop because we have a duty to make sure that the waters are safe, to make sure that the fish industry grows. UPDF is also worried that the seditious statements and government critics on social media platforms are scaling away donors interested in supporting UPDF-led projects. Statements to the extent of saying uh, donors don't come. Donors don't bring money here. Sometimes we are forced to to come into things that we would not want to have wanted to do. We are forced to do action, th certain things or to take actions or approaches that we would not have wanted. But we cannot see someone fighting Ugandans because when you're talking about donors not coming into the country, you're kind of fighting Ugandans. Abdul Nasil Lubwama, UBC News. To Karamoja now, where 3rd Division Commander Brigadier General Joseph Balikudembe has received one gun bought from Kenya by a 25-year-old Karimujong Loki uh, in Chumar to destabilize communities in Rupa sub-county Moroto district. However, Balikudembe advised leaders and people to hand over and report those with guns to authorities. The cute in Karamoja by forcefully recovering guns from the locals, some individuals have come out to hand over guns peacefully. A 25-year-old loke in Chuma from Rupa sub-county in Moroto district handed over a gun to the 3rd Division Commander Brigadier General Bali Kudembe Joseph at Moroto Military Barracks. Loke says he bought the gun with five cars from Kenya and has been using it to raid. Brigadier General Bali Kudembe thanked Loke for handling over a gun peacefully. And we have, uh, since he has voluntarily given out the gun, 
we, we are not going to arrest him, but we shall use him to mobilize others to bring uh, the guns voluntarily. Our operation, which started on Friday, is yielding results, both voluntary and forceful. Although some individuals are surrendering guns peacefully, there are those hiding them, especially in Kabong and Kotido district. Most of the leaders whom I'm talking about are the Erosis one chairperson, Erosi three chairpersons, and even Erosi five chairpersons, who can reach out to these people at sub county level, parish level, and village level, surrender the guns. It is something that can bring peace in this sub region. Meanwhile, the third division commander brigade. General Barikudem says they have started an operation to disarm Karamojongs forcefully and they have started from Kotido and Kabong districts. Saddam Ubale, UBC News, Kampala. Meanwhile, at least 4,000 families have been left homeless in Amolatar district. Now, this has resulted from flash floods from the rising Lake Choga waters, which have sub submerged several hundreds kilometers in the district's land. Now the floods have also submerged roads, disconnecting a number of communities uh, from accessing uh, social services in the district. Ed Olwa reports. As the country grapples to contain the second wave of COVID-19, Amolatar district seems to be going through the worst in the country. With all the crops burnt in the gardens due to prolonged sunshine, the peninsula district has also lost hundreds of acres of gardens and homesteads to floods from Lake Yoga and Kwania, leaving thousands homeless. It's over 12,000 people that have been displaced, but it is over 4,000 households that has been displaced by the rising water level. And, and this is what you don't need an explanation. In fact, in, in, in a Latin maxim is commonly referred to as res ipsa locator. The evidence speaks for itself. You don't need to dig deep. We have finalized this assessment on the families that have been affected. So the immediate uh, task now that we have is to inform the center 